What's up, y'all? It's me, it's your boy, Asmund Gold. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about two main things. Now, the first thing is we're going to be talking about uh, just like we're going to have like a little bit of a discussion, like a talk about making gold and war to Draenor and how it's very different than a lot of the other expansions. And uh, I'm going to explain why. And uh, that's also going to tie into the second part is uh, how I make uh, make money on the auction house and how I determine what to buy, what to sell and what to look for. Now, the first thing, guys, is a lot of y'all always ask me, and this is a live video, by the way, so I really hope I don't fuck something up like 10 minutes into it. Anyway, so the, a lot of you guys really ask me all the time, uh, why uh, why am I not making more Gold Guide videos? And I'm going to tell you, there really aren't that many spots to show. I think that, like, because I've looked on, um, what do you call it, on YouTube and on other places on, like, Google to see if there are other spots that are, like, maybe I just haven't talked about the spot. Maybe I can improve on somebody else's spot or something like that. No. I mean, uh, there are two spots that I have not shown in any video. Uh, there's one with like the Frost Wolves and uh, Frostfire Ridge, and that's like really overdone, and that's why I never made a video of that. And I think there's, oh, the Elix in, uh, in Shadow Moon Valley, and I think that that's just a complete waste of time, and it's really, really stupid farming uh, farming spot, and so that's why I didn't do that one. And so those two spots are the only two spots I believe... Uh, that, that are even really worth a damn in all of Wards of Draenor in terms of farming, uh, active farming. Uh, in Wards of Draenor, like, one thing that's very, uh, very different than in other expansions is that there's, like, this big idea of, I, don't, I guess, like, passive income and passive gains uh, through your garrison. And so, for example, this is that, I don't know, I guess it's not on this character, but uh, you, on my other characters, like you guys can see right there, I have a total of 7,000 Beast Tides. Do you know how many Beast Tides I've looted from bosses? Zero. I've, or mobs, anything, zero. And I've gotten all of these items just from the barn. And everybody else who's making Savage Blood, which is a ton of people because you guys crashed the price, fuck you. But I guess, hey, what, you know, how can I blame you guys? I made the video. But I think that everybody's been doing it before I made the video anyway. Point is, sucks, but that's how it is. And uh, what I'm saying is, that, like, so all these raw beast tides are now in the economy. And so uh, effectively going out and skinning mobs is... A complete waste of time because there are so many people who are passively creating raw savage be or sorry uh, raw beast tides and uh, sumptuous fur that the the market demand is just already satiated by the amount that's being added into the economy through the the passive gains through the barn and so there's no real reason to go out and farm sumptuous fur real I mean really uh, there's no reason to go out and farm raw beast tides as a skinner. Like, there's no reason to be a miner, honestly, because you can just get everything through the mines. And so if you have, like, three or four characters, you can just go through all three or four characters and do, like, the equivalent of probably hours of mining because you don't have flying, for one. And two, like, all of the mines are consolidated in that one area in your mine, and so all you have to do is walk around. So you're doing, like, a mine, like, every, I don't know, like, ten seconds. And so what this really comes down to is that Wars of Draenor farming is almost non-existent, and it, I think it sucks, personally, and I really hope that they change it, because there's almost nothing that you can farm. And so, example, again, for this, is that there is no real cloth in the game. Uh, there's, I guess you could say that the raw beast hide is, like, the leather, and then also the, um, the sumptuous fur is the cloth, but I don't really view it in the same way. And a lot of mobs don't really drop sumptuous fur in the same way that they would drop cloth. And a lot of my videos, uh, you know, I made a number of different videos for farming Windwall cloth, uh, for example, in Missa Pandaria, and also farming Imbersil cloth in Cataclysm. And so this is a really big difference and a big change, and I think everybody needs to be aware of this. And so you really kind of have to think outside the box in terms of making gold and rewards of Draenor. And that's what I'm going to kind of help you guys do today. And I'm going to try and bring in some more of these videos, and I'd like to, I guess, like, get you guys' input on this, is that I can come up with a lot of videos on like how to make money through the auction house and the reason that I don't really do that a lot is because every auction house is different and so like let's say on Kel'Thuzad, um, Ember Silk Bags sell for 500 gold like let's say that's pretty much what they're selling for right now I just sold one like five minutes ago and on let's say Illidan or something like that big horde server uh, they're only selling for 250 gold and so the values are going to be very different and also the uh, especially if you're buying and reselling after you created something else out of it with the profession uh, it's very hard to, I guess, like attach an amount of, uh, of income or profit that you're going to receive per hour or per item because it depends on everything else. But I do want to hear uh, your guys' opinion on that. And so if you guys want to see me do some more, uh, I guess, like item shuffling or, uh, you know, like uh, creating, uh, I don't know, like value through professions and selling it on the auction house, I can definitely do that. And uh, it would be very easy for me to do because I've been spending a lot of time doing it. 
Now that's pretty much really all I have to say about the wards of Draenor uh, farming. And really, guys, it's just it's about the passive uh, passive accruement of different items like uh, such as uh, raw beast hides, sumptuous fur, uh, fell iron ore, dark iron, not dark iron ore. I don't know the uh, black rock ore. And pretty much everything else, all the other crafting materials are either soul bound or they're, uh, there's so many of them that's being created in the economy passively through the garrison uh, that farming them is no longer valid and a, you know, a very worthwhile thing to do. And so anyway, I do want to show you guys some of the things that I do. Let's see what I got in here. Son of a bitch. It's not a mount. I don't even know if it drops a mount. I wish it did. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys a lot of the different things that I've been trying to sell in the auction house. Now, uh, one thing uh, is the ember silk bags. And so I'm going to show you guys that. Uh, so I put up five of them, and I have one sold, and uh, obviously this guy bought it from, it looks like a girl actually, and um, you guys obviously would never want to buy any of these, because I made a guide on how to get pretty much all these bags for free, but uh, let's say you're making a new character, I guess it might not be a complete waste of time. Anyway, so each of these bags uh, takes about 200 gold to create, and uh, so I'm selling it for almost 200% profit, and so as I would say that's an extremely good, uh, I don't know, like margin. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys, uh, because there's two crafting materials that go into this. Uh, one crafting material is going to be 15 bolts of ember silk cloth, and the other crafting material is going to be 15 hypnotic dust. And so first thing we're going to look at hypnotic dust. Please don't spell it wrong in the video. Okay, good. So there's going to be 13 hypnotic dust. So 13 times 15 is, uh, let's see, 15 times 15 is 300, and so 13, so that's about 200-ish uh, gold. And um, on top of that, uh, actually, let me just, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and I'll actually do the calculations right now. Okay, uh, so let's say uh, we'll just round up to 14 uh, just for the sake of this. Okay, so this is going to be about 200 gold for uh, the hypnotic dust here. And uh, then if we also add in the bolt of ember silk cloth. Uh, so each one of these is nine. And so nine, uh, let's see, let's go over here. And so, all right, so it's 210 plus nine times 15. E oh shit, that's not what it's supposed to be. Just a second. Nine times 15 is 135, so plus 210. And so you're pretty much creating, uh, you know, at, at this point, buying hypnotic dust at 13 gold, you know, all these different things. Uh, you know, your break even point is obviously 345 gold. And so by selling it for the price that I'm selling it at, I'm going to make about 100 gold profit just from clicking a few buttons. Now I could even go further than that and just uh, buy the ember silk cloth by itself because it takes five ember silk cloth to create one bolt. And so one bolt would uh, obviously at that point, uh, one ember silk cloth would have to cost a little bit over uh, 1.8 gold. And uh, so as you guys can see here, I can go ahead and I can make ember silk cloth. I can make, sorry, I can make uh, bolts of ember silk at an even cheaper price and probably get that bottom line down to about 330 or maybe even 320. And so this is a very efficient way of looking at things. And this is something that I would recommend for almost everybody that has a profession to look into. Because there are a lot of different things you can do like this. And um, with so many different items that are in the game, uh, it's very rare that you won't be able to capitalize on any of this stuff. Now another example of this, uh, maybe for people who are alchemists and or herbalists, I guess herbalists is also kind of a waste of time, but if you still have an herbalist, this will be useful because this is uh, old uh, old stuff. So treasure finding, we're going to get potion of treasure finding. Okay, that's that doesn't need to be there. So potions of treasure finding sell for 250 gold. Uh, I already did the math for this kind of a while ago, and uh, the amount of time that you need to, or the amount of effort that you need to, I guess, like make one of these, is um, like about 100 gold pretty much, or maybe 150. So again, just by creating, uh, you know, like gathering up all the materials, this is just literally buying them off the auction house and clicking a button and you're like, you're like literally buying money. And so, I mean, honestly, this is amazing, right? And so uh, there are a lot of different things that are like this. And uh, this is just two examples that uh, I've been aware of, uh, you know, on the Kel'Thuzad auction house. Now, one thing that's very important, uh, there's there are two different things that you can do here. Now, one thing is that you can try and corner a large, or sorry, a, a medium to small market. And this is a lot easier to do on smaller servers because, of course, there are less people who are competing on the auction house. It's very difficult to corner a large market like, let's say, Savage Blood. Uh, so these are up to 300. I might actually probably try and sell here. There are 302 Savage Blood, and the odds are all of these have occurred, uh, all of these auctions have occurred probably within uh, 24 hours. And so you'd have to be creating a huge amount of Savage Blood 
in order to really influence and create a market for yourself without having to lose money in the process. And so it's better to create or a, um, to be able, basically be able to have a small to, uh, to mid-range market of a certain item that you have and then kind of be able to control that market and control and regulate the price with that and then buy out people that are, are selling for cheaper than you and you know everything else like that. Now, doing this is also a very big time commitment and it's also an investment. And uh, so you don't really wanna do this if you don't really care about, I guess, like playing the auction house or anything like that. Because if you kind of ever stop at any point, it's like, uh, it's like you get on the ride and you can't get off hardly because you have to always like kind of be like renewing your um, your supply and everything like that. And so at some point you'll probably lose money whenever you try and get out of it. And so that's kind of a, a bad thing. But whenever you are in it and uh, if you're able to make it profitable, it can be extremely profitable. I know a lot of people who have made like a lot, a lot of gold on the auction house. I see like people on Twitch and stuff like that, or at least they advertise they've made that much. Most of the gold that they've created has been through through the auction house and um, not through like farming, I don't know, like keys and veil of the four winds or uh, I don't know, like veil, I don't know, the, the poison pandaria, I can't remember it. Anyway, so I'm going to show you guys a couple of other uh, different tips that I use in terms of uh, pricing items. Now, one example here is that you can use, uh, you can sort by item level here. And after it sorts to level, it will sort to item level, and so it's going to uh, aggregate all of these different, uh, all of these different miscellaneous armor pieces by their item level. As you guys can see, these are all 680, and as we scroll down, they're going to go down to 671, as you guys saw, 665, and I think there's probably going to be some other stuff there. I'm not even entirely sure. I, I guess there wouldn't be because it would be level 91. And that's another thing that you guys want to know is that if you're going to try and resell crafted uh, weapons and armor. Uh, that item level is 91, and so you want to be aware of that because it's not going to show up at level 100 stuff. And uh, another example of this is obviously, like, for me personally, I always check on my warrior to see, like, if there are certain items up. I've been trying to get, like, the throw guard necklace and um, maybe a couple of other things. I used to check for the, uh, the boots, but I'd already got those, and so thank God. And so I can go ahead and I can look at this. And so this is a Mythic Bracers, uh, Haste Multi-Strike. Might be pretty good for rep. No, I don't really think it is right. good for rep paladins. I'm not entirely sure if, if these are good at all. And it's only 47,000 gold. And so for a mythic uh, item here, and it's going to be 700 item level whenever um, Tuesday comes out, this is a relatively good price. And so if you play this market and you're aware of this market, uh, one thing that's very important also to know is make sure that you know whenever everybody gets their, um, their Blackrock Foundry missions. Because whenever everybody gets their Blackrock Foundry missions, there's going to be a very big surge of... Uh, of items going into the auction house and it's going to drive the prices down very quickly just so everybody can sell their stuff. Now whenever that happens that's pretty much when everything is on sale and you can go ahead and buy that stuff very cheap and obviously one thing that's that's very dangerous with this is like let's say like this is an item and I thought about buying this honestly because it's only uh, 9,000 gold and it's a 671 item and uh, you know, I, I would say that this is pretty, pretty, pretty worth it. But I don't really want to make the investment, especially since it's not even heroic. Now, uh, obviously, some people would, and that's fine. But let's say you uh, you make the wrong call, you're down nine, you're down nine thousand, uh, nine thousand gold, and uh, or I guess like I guess you could sell it back and maybe make up like half of that. And so, I mean, you're kind of taking a risk, especially if you don't know your market. So. Make sure that whenever you're going to be selling anything on the auction house, you know your market entirely. It's not like you just look at it for a couple of days. Uh, I would say just check the price on something at pretty much the same time of day or maybe a couple of different times a day uh, as, as often as you can for two weeks. And I think that that should give you a pretty good, uh, I guess, like determination on the ebb and flow of any real given item. And so another thing that we're going to look at here is also bags, as I said before, in general. Now, hex weave bags sell pretty well. Uh, they don't really sell that well uh, compared to royal satchels, honestly, because, I mean, you get two extra bags, so you get the best bag in the game for only 500 more gold. I don't really know why anybody would buy these, but I think that people still do. And so you can go ahead and you can pay attention to this. And uh, also the bag, uh, bag selling business, especially, uh, you know, like royal satchels and below with the Pandaria stuff is very easy to get into as long as you have a tailor. And as you guys see, there are ember silk bags, and illusionary bags are not very profitable to create at all. But uh, ember silk bags can be extremely profitable, uh, so can imbued frost weave bags. And so that's another thing you know to be aware of. Or I don't think it's imbued frost weave, I think it's just frost weave bags. And so bags are another thing that you guys can always look at and definitely try and make some money off of it. Uh, consumables, these are always like hard to find, and uh, not really hard to find, but hard to really make a profit off of. 
uh, trade goods. I've been trying to. Uh, I'm just, just a second. I think I need to sort by rarity. Yeah. Uh, so enchanted aluminium bar is a good example of something you could make a good amount of money off of. See, this guy here has the right idea. Uh, the price of these aluminium bars are not really that high, and the reason that what pushes this aluminium bar price up really high is something called arcane crystals. And arcane crystals are only mined from thorium veins, and you can also you cannot get them through prospecting, and so that makes them very valuable. And so. Uh, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and take a look. So these are 44 gold, and I believe it takes 10 arcane crystals to create one uh, enchanted aluminium bar. And uh, I'm not entirely sure about that. And so if it is, let's say, 10 of them, if you can create 10 of them, uh, obviously that would be 440 gold, plus the thorium bars, which are very cheap. They're less than 100 gold to, to, uh, to create all of those to create one bar. And so by creating one bar, you're obviously going to be able to make a profit of 200 gold. The problem with that is how many people are going to be making Thunder Fury every day. And I ran into that issue, uh, this was like the first time that I ever really kind of learned about supply and demand. And I remember I was like trying to sell, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it was like some like level 68 plate gloves. And I put up like 20 of them at the same time. And I realized about halfway through after I put up about 10, it's like how many level 68 tanks are going to want to buy these off the auction house from me within 20, 48 hours, right? And at that time, I like really just realized it, like I learned it right then. And so there's a really, really big part of this is knowing how much you're really going to be able to sell is because how many of these enchanted aluminum bars would you be able to sell? Probably not that many. I would say that you probably wouldn't even sell 10 uh, every week because obviously not everybody's doing uh, creating Thunder Fury. And then, you know, the drop rates from, uh, you know, the Baron Geddon and Gar are like 2.5%. And so how many times are people both going to get both the items and want to buy the, uh, uh, what do you call it? the um the bars it's it's very rare and so that's something else that you should take into consideration and i think anybody should and i think that's just kind of general advice is know how many prospective buyers you have and don't over flood the market because then you're just going to have shit in your in your mailbox and then you're going to have to deal with it again and you also have to pay the uh what do you call it the deposit fee and uh so another thing i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to show you guys i think two more things uh this is another example of something that like you can kind of capitalize on people being stupid and uh, it's a lot of battle pets, all, all battle pets start off as, or some battle pets start off as companion pets. And so you can buy some companion pets, learn them, and then cage them, and then sell them as a battle pet. And that will automatically increase their value because people don't know that they can buy them cheaper or that they don't know that they can do that. However, you cannot make a battle pet back into a companion pet. The reason that some, battle, that some companion pets are worth more than the battle pets by the way if you guys uh, maybe would have would have that question is because before you actually learn a battle pet uh, into your character uh, you don't know what breed it is and so for example of this is a uh, uh, let's see um, a fiendish imp I don't know I guess where is a fiendish imp I guess maybe you would have to learn him but there are a lot of these different uh, these different um, what are they called sorry um, battle pets that you don't really know what breed they are and certain breeds increase the value and certain breeds decrease the value and so some people don't really want to take the risk and so that's why they sell for a higher price as you know some people do want to take the risk and they want to buy it and hopefully they'll roll you know the correct breed and then they'll be able to resell it for a higher price or they'll be able to get what they wanted for a lower price to begin with and so that's one example and uh, obviously you can look at this and uh, juxtapose the prices from the uh, companion pets uh, over to the battle pets and then make a decision that way now, uh, whenever you're looking at battle pets, I'll tell you guys, like right now, one thing that was very smart to do uh, as soon as 6.1 came out was to buy a lot of very cheap level 25 battle pets. And the reason for that is a lot of people, uh, you know, you guys uh, know, might not know, there was like a stone that they gave you. They gave it pretty much everybody in the game. Uh, it would create one level 25 battle pet. And a lot of people don't really pet battle. And so as soon as they had this happen, they went and they tried to sell their battle pets. And so there was a huge surge of level 25 battle pets all trying to be sold, which of course is going to draw the price down because the um, uh, the market didn't increase. It was only the, uh, the amount of them that increases. So obviously the value would have to decrease instead. And so an example uh, of this, I guess you could say, is pretty much any of these, uh, I guess like kind of mediocre pets. I'm um, trying to find like Chrominius is a, is a very mediocre pet. And uh, the price for uh, buying Chrominius is like, this is a level, this is a ridiculous price. No one is going to buy this for 7,000 gold. And if they are, I need to farm some Chrominiuses because that's a ridiculous price. It's absolutely insane. Usually uh, the price, the value, I guess, I guess only on Kel'Thuzad, but I know here, uh, the value of actually leveling a pet from 1 to 25 is about 2,000 gold. 
And so you can take the original value of the pet and then add 2,000 gold to that. And um, obviously, if the value of the pet at level 1 is uh, less than 2,000 gold higher, or sorry, yeah, uh, more than 2,000 gold higher, then you might want to level it yourself or wait to buy. And uh, if it's more than 2,000 gold higher, or, you know, like the difference is, is less than 2,000 gold between level 1 and level 25, uh, then you might want to go ahead and buy that level 25 pet and try and resell it for a higher price. Uh, that's just an example, and I guess you can kind of look and determine all that for your own uh, for your own server as well, but that's just another way of looking at it. Uh, another thing also to, to be, I guess, like aware of is that uh, you always have to know kind of like whenever things, like because on the first day, on the first day, like Abyssius, uh, this was one of the um, one of the pets for raiding with Leisure's 3, uh, what's called Drinking from the Sunwell. And so Abyssius was selling, like all of these pets uh, were selling for nearly uh, like five times their, their trade value. Now, like these fragments of suffering and anger were selling for a significant amount of money uh, because of how RNG they were. And so this is a good example of kind of capitalizing on something. And so I was able to sell a lot of mine uh, that I obtained on the first day because I ran it on all my characters on the first day because I was sitting on standby on my raid. And I was able to make, uh, I'd say like twenty to 30,000 gold just by selling these pets at a very high price because people want to buy them on the first day to get the achievement or for whatever else, uh, for whatever other reason. Uh, another thing, of course, is that if you know what breeds that people want, like the Fiendish Hump, uh, the very fast breed, the 3-3-3 breed, is extremely valuable. And the reason for that is it makes it to where a Fiendish Hump can cast uh, Nether Gate on the first turn and always, uh, we call it, switch out the first pet, uh, effectively giving itself a free turn. And so that's something, again, that, uh, you know, the more that you know your market, the more that you know how to, I guess, manipulate your market and, uh, you know, how do you know when there is a good deal and when there's not a good deal. I personally do not think 4,000 gold is a very good deal for a Fiendish Imp, but uh, if it was maybe 3,000 gold uh, with the Speed Imp, the 3 through 3 Imp, I would probably go for it. Now, there's one last thing that I want to show you guys, and the reason I saved this for last is because it's probably going to be the most risky, and as you can see, I'm already clicking on it. Uh, it's going to be mounts, and the reason for that, uh, the reason this is very risky is because, of course, like, look at how much these things are. Like, these are extremely expensive, and so if you make a mistake here, you know, like, the stakes are very high. Uh, obviously, this is something you really want to be aware of all the time. Now, an example of this is I made a mistake, and I thought I would buy a big battle bear during Cataclysm for 85,000 gold, and I tried to resell it about 50 times, and I never was able to sell it enough to where I'd make a profit. I ended up just learning it, and that was all well. But uh, that's like the that's an example of the 85,000 gold mistake, and um, you know obviously I wouldn't have made that mistake if I knew more about my market. And so uh, examples of this is like uh, a lot of these like different TCG mounts are probably only going to sell as I said before. This is on Keltazad, but I've assumed on a lot of the servers it's pretty similar uh, for about 80 to 100,000 gold. And so if you see one that's under 80,000 gold. I would probably recommend the buying it, but of course it depends on your server and everything else like that. Uh, some of the newer ones, like the Feldrake, uh, will probably sell for more, as you guys can see. Uh, now, the, the, there's like three really valuable ones. Uh, there's the Feldrake, is probably the third most valuable. Uh, the Magic Rooster, uh, the big cock that you ride on, is very valuable, and it's probably the second most valuable uh, TCG mount. And I would say that you would want to buy this at any point that's under 150,000 gold for sure, and under 200,000 gold, I guess, depending on your server. Uh, there are a lot of other mounts, like the Garn Nighthowl. Uh, sometimes these are 2,000 gold, and sometimes they're 5,000 gold. And so let's say if I had like five of these, I could put a bunch of them up for 5,000 gold. And another thing that's very good about selling mounts is that they have no deposit fee. and so Or they have basically no deposit, it's like one silver or something like that. And so this is a very easy and effective way to, I guess, like... Uh, I guess like not spend a lot of money if you want to just keep putting it up over and over. And usually prices on these will go up and down because sometimes there'll be people farming them. There'll be like a dozen of them up here, and sometimes there'll only be a few. When there's only a few, there's usually they're usually more expensive. Uh, this is another one, the Ghastly Charger Skull. Uh, this is usually more expensive. Uh, the Choppers. These are really kind of like sold at value of the uh, of the materials, and so I would not ever recommend buying one of these unless they're under probably twelve thousand gold. And even then, it probably was a um, uh, I guess like a duped mount. Now this uh, model trick is actually kind of funny. Now because on my old channel, I actually had um, I had a video where I bought a model Drake for 163 gold. Right, I bought it for 163 gold, and of course it was supposed to be up for 163,000 gold. And honestly, it was the first time that I ever had over uh, six digits of uh, of gold on my character ever. And so that was really cool. And I remember the guy messaged me. And he's like, 
oh, where'd you buy that? I was like, yeah, I bought it from some guy on the auction house, and it was actually him, and he didn't, I don't think he knew it was. And I think as soon as he realized that he logged off, and I added my friends list, I never saw that guy log back on again. So, you know, it's kind of a, you know, yeah, that's, that's how it goes. Anyway, so the most valuable mount here is, uh, I think pretty much everybody probably knows this, is the uh, Reigns of the Swift Spectral Tiger. Now, it usually sells for, uh, I would say, buy this at any point where it's under 300,000 gold, and, um, or actually probably under 250,000 gold for sure buy, and 300,000 would be more of a, uh, um, you know, a, a more risky buy, because, of course, the auction house does take a cut, and so it would be better to find an individual and, uh, you know, buy directly or sell directly to them, not using the auction house, but usually people will try and have you down for a lower price. Now, uh, this is one example, as I said before, of something that, you can make a lot of money on. Like, let's say that you're able to sell this to somebody for 400,000 gold and you bought it for 300,000 gold. You just made 100,000 gold. And so the stakes are higher and so are the rewards. And so what I recommend for anybody trying to get into this is don't try and buy and resell a Spectral Tiger first thing. You know, go into small things and then build your way up. And that would be my uh, my real advice in terms of going into the auction house. I love birds. Obviously, um, whenever they're not in season, they sell really well. Usually during, uh, I guess, like whenever, the closer it gets to Valentine's Day, like probably like the first the first four months after Valentine's Day, people will sell them at a high price because everybody else is waiting until the summer to sell them. And so, again, this is a know your market thing. And um, it always depends, of course, on who wants to buy a Swift Lovebird because, honestly, they're like a really shitty mount, right? So how many people want to buy them? Uh, Wooly Right Rhino, I actually saw this the other day uh, for 80,000 gold and I was about to buy it. I didn't just because it's a stupid mount, it's, uh, it doesn't ride correctly. But the point is that uh, that's an option that you can always take uh, if you have a lot of money, a lot of capital, and you want to go ahead and try and do that. But it is very risky. I also saw a range of the, of the Spectral Tiger, the uh, blue version, which is not really quite as valuable, of course, because it's not as epic, and I think it's missing a couple of other armor pieces. And it was actually uh, up up on the auction house for 180,000 gold. And I probably should have bought it, honestly, because I've never seen it lower than 200,000. And I also saw it one time in Cataclysm for 120,000, and I felt like a fucking idiot for not buying it because another guy in my guild bought it, and he literally sold it for double the price the next day. And so, again, you know, high risk, high reward. And, uh, you know, don't think that you're just going to go in and get rich quick either. Um, you know, it's very risky, and sometimes it takes a really long time. Uh, to sell high dollar items because obviously there's going to be a very small market for them. Uh, honestly, guys, I would say that that's pretty much a lot of the advice I want to give you. Uh, I have no idea how long this video is, but I think I've been talking for kind of a while. So uh, probably it's pretty probably pretty long video. Um, again, I do want to recap on a lot of the things that I've talked about in case, uh, you know, just for whatever reason, people might have forgotten or clicked through it. Um, one of the most important things that I would say uh, is understanding how Wards of Draenor farming differs from uh, farming in previous expansions, uh, that you have so much more passive uh, materials get adding into the, uh, added into the economy, that it's very, it's almost not profitable at all to farm the new materials. It's definitely more profitable to farm Ember Silk Cloth than it is to farm Sumptuous Fur. How, I mean, that sounds ridiculous, right? But it's true. And so that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, another thing is, of course, uh, just knowing your market like as i said before i can't say this enough uh it's extremely important that if you don't because if you don't know your market obviously uh you you will you're bound to make mistakes and uh, also whenever a new patch comes out make sure that you know all the patch notes and how it will affect uh, your current uh, assets and everything else like that now also i do want to recap and uh, ask the same question as i asked about a uh, one-third into the video is if you do you guys want to see more of these auction house guides and uh, more I guess like flipping things and uh, you know like creating value through professions or just creating value through like buying something and then selling it in another way, etc. Let me know. I'm not really entirely sure if I'm going to do that because as I said before, uh, they can be very subjective based on server and that's why I haven't really done a lot of those in the past. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I got before I just keep talking because I think I started this video like a half hour ago. Oh my god. So hopefully I didn't bore everybody, but I think I put in as much inf useful information as I could, but we'll see because I have to rewatch this. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching and like, comment, subscribe.